Hey yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Today with problem number 1054, distant barcodes. So this problem came up in earlier this year in 2020 in one of the weekly or bi-weekly contests. And it, it looks like it's been picked up by uh, Bloomberg predominantly. So they've asked this one a couple of times. And I think it's a really good problem with a, uh, a bit of a clever solution really. Uh, pretty unique, I'd argue. So I, I haven't really done one like this before personally. I don't know what happened there. Uh, I haven't done one like this before personally, so I thought it would be a really good one to, to go over and maybe uh, pick up a few tricks from. So if you haven't, if you haven't, yeah, if you haven't tried it yet, pause the video, give it a read, give it a try, and then come on back, all right? So uh, 1054 distant barcodes. We're told in a warehouse there's a row of barcodes where the i barcode is barcodes of i. Rearrange the barcodes so that no two adjacent barcodes are equal. You may return any answer and it is guaranteed an answer exists. All right, so if we look at an example like this one here where we've got 111222, these each represent a barcode, uh, what we could potentially return is, um, maybe I'll put it here. What we could potentially return is 212121. Uh, they're also saying you can't return any answer, so that means you could also do something like one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so both of those are, are acceptable. We're good. Uh, similarly, we've got one, 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 two, two, three, three. They went with one, three, one, three, two, one, two, one. Again, I, I think it's it's a very easy problem to understand, not an easy one to solve, but easy to understand. So every single barcode now does not have any, it doesn't have a, a matching barcode to itself in either of its adjacent positions. All right. So how do I do this? Well, maybe we can, uh, let me walk you guys through at least kind of what my first attempt was and how I, I failed horribly at it. Um, and then I'll give you guys the, the correct answer. And, and really like, I'm, I'm only half joking, but, but truly I do want to walk through the, walk through the, the logic and see how we can actually get to, to answering this question. All right. So one, 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 two, two, two is what we got. So one potential way of thinking about, it, and this was again, kind of my, my first thought um, was to say, let me, you know, maybe I, I was, I think I was modifying this in place, but what I'll do is for the sake of this example and, and for the final answer, I'll, I'll keep a, a separate result array and, and build my answer in there. Uh, what I was doing was saying, okay, well, I can, I can bring this first element down and then let's start from the second element, element, element and iterate onwards, all right? So I start iterating from here and I, what I do is I ask myself, is this element the same as the element before it? The answer is yes. Then what I'm essentially going to do is to jump ahead and say, okay, let me keep moving some pointer up until I find my first non-identical element, which would be this one right over here. And then what I said was, okay, well, in that case, let me let me swap those two. Let me let me make this a two, and and let me make this a one. And then okay, we're good. So we got this like one two one situation, and I'll again I'll, I'll kind of keep this here separately. Um, but this is a this is a two. All right. So we um. No, I apologize, that's a one. That's still a one, I'm sorry, I swapped these, this is now a one, all right, it's no longer a two. Um, so I keep on going, I, I kind of place this item here now, I'm doing some double tapping, so this was immediately gonna become quadratic anyways, it kind of felt wrong, but you know, you might think, okay, well, this is fine, now, you know, the, the one is different from the two, and then, oh, we got another adjacent one here, so let's let's do the same thing, let's kind of traverse along until we find a, a non-one element, which we do here. So we say, okay, wicked, let's swap those, this becomes two, this becomes one, we had something like two, one, we check these numbers, they're all good, it's like cool, all right, we got a solution, I forgot to write this down, but you know, it, it all kind of lines up. I know I, I'm a bit messy and quick in my explanation, but I think generally you guys get, get what, I'm, what I'm getting at. The problem I found there was what if we had an example like two, one, one. All right, so we, we look at the two, we drop that down, then we say, well, this one's not the same as a two, so everyone's happy, one goes down. We get to this one and realize, okay, well, you know, this one is, is, is not the same, or sorry, this one is the same, we need to swap it with something else. I take a step forward, whoops, we're out of bounds, we end up returning this, and this ain't right. All right, and it's inefficient. So this solution didn't work very well. So I heck with this, and we'll start a new one. So that one didn't work all that well for us. And then essentially, what we need to realize in this problem is, uh, is as follows. Actually, there's, there's one piece of information they give us which can kind of trigger a hint in our in our minds, and and this hint isn't necessary. You could still solve the problem without it, but 
what they do say is that an answer is guaranteed to exist. All right, so if an answer is guaranteed to exist, and I give you a list of length n, okay, how many times can the most frequent element appear? If I give you a, a list of length six, okay, and again, same question, how many times can the most frequent element appear? Well, if we want to start, you know, we've got an even number of elements and there's guaranteed to be an answer, we can at most have three ones. If I've got anything more than three ones, I won't be able to do this. And so if, if that's the case, we've got, you know, we can get up to three ones. If I had five elements, let's think about it. If I had five elements, could I still have three ones? Yeah. If I had, you know, six, I could have something like this, x, x, x. And if I had something similar except an odd number, I could have one x, one x, one. So at most, we're going to have, you know, n plus one, maybe we'll have n over two, or um, n plus one over two. That's the maximum number of times we can see the most frequently occurring element. So why am I making a big stink over this? Well, if we realize that that's the case, then no matter what, if I wanted to fill my array with my most common element, so again, let's go with a, let's go with, go if we had five, for example. If I had five elements in total and I had potentially most frequent up here up to three times, okay? The maximum possible. Where do I have to put those, right? I would have to put them in the first position, or the zeroth index. Then I'd have to put it in the second index. Then I'd have to put it in the fourth index. Once I reach the end, I would then have to go back and start filling in these other odd elements with other things. And, and this is exactly where the trick lies in this question. Or not even the, the trick, but just the key to getting it. If I had something even longer, so let's say I had one, 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 two, two, three, three, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, and I'll, I'll do something like this. I'll do five, just so we have an awe. Forget the five, we don't need it. We'll do, we'll do uh, an even number this time, all right? One is my most frequently occurring element. So if I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, how I would, and again, we'll, we'll obviously go through the code, but logically to fill this in, what I have to do is start from left to right in the zeroth index position and start filling every other, every other element. So I've done one, one, one. Okay, I've filled those. Now I've got the rest of these elements to fill. How do we ensure now? What is, so we could get in a situation where let's say I had something like, oh, well, I'll, you know, I'll, just, I'll take these and I'll start filling them from left to right. So I'll go two, two, three, and then maybe let's say we didn't have the four, for example, all right, just to, to kind of prove my example. And then I'm like, oh, damn, I'm out of space. So what do we do here? How do we make sure that we don't fall into this situation? Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to say, let's do almost like a, I like to think of it of doing a two pass fill through the result array, skipping an element every single time. So first we're gonna fill in the even indices and then the odd indices. I filled in all my ones. Let me keep skipping two indices at a time and fill this thing. So I skip another two from here, I fill in this two, I got that. Now I skip another two, whoops, I'm out of bounds. Reset my index back to one, we're now gonna start filling the odd indices. We're gonna fill in the two, that's gone. We're gonna fill in the three, that's gone. We're gonna fill in the three, that's gone. We're gonna fill in the four, that's gone. You passed your interview, you're working at Google, thank me later. Does that make sense? Let me know down below if it does, or, or of course if it, if it doesn't as well, but this is the key to solving this thing, is understanding that we need to find, and I'll write these steps down, we need to find the most frequently occurring element, all right? We need to find, we don't necessarily need to find how much, you know, how many times each of them, let me backtrack. We need to find the most frequently occurring element. In order to do that, what we've got to do is to find the frequency of all of these. So we'll do one pass through, and we'll, we'll keep track of, of, of the frequency of how many times they come up. Of course, the data structure we should use for that will, will naturally be a dictionary or a hash table, okay, to keep track of that. We will then go and identify what the highest occurring, highest frequency element is. And we could potentially do that in one pass. I think I'll break it up into two steps just to, just, just for clarity of explanation. But we find the most frequently occurring one, and we start filling from the zeroth index on every two spaces. And we keep filling, we keep filling, we keep filling. When we run out of that element, we start filling in with the rest of the frequencies until we kind of reach out of bounds here the first time. Then we jump back to this first index, and now we fill the, the odd indices. All right? 
I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't go through that too quickly. But like I said, it, at least for me, this was my first time seeing a seeing a problem like this, and I thought that it was a I thought it was a really clever solution. So, I think at this point we've we've hammered out the logic enough to to kind of take a pause here, jump back to the code, and uh, and see how to make this thing happen, right? Now, as per usual, first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll do my error checking. Though, I think the error checking might be redundant here. Might be. I think the code would work without it, but I'll, I'll put it in here for now. Um, if not barcode, so if we're given an empty list or none or something, I'll, I'll just say let's return barcodes, all right? So we've done our error checking. Now, next thing we need to do is to say uh, find frequency of all numbers, all right? So uh, essentially what we'll do is we'll create a, let's say a, a dictionary. And, and in this dictionary, we'll, we'll loop through the barcodes now and, and start filling frequencies. And what I'll do is I'll say for for all the numbers in, in barcodes, what we'll say is this, if the number's not in the barcode, so if I'm not in barcode, uh, sorry, if it's not in the dictionary already, if it's not in the dictionary, then we're going to want to put it in there. Uh, so we're going to want to say uh, dictionary of, of num, and we'll set it equal to zero, because what I'm going to do out here is just going to say we'll take dictionary of, of num, and increase it by one. So this way, if a number's already in there, we won't jump into the if statement, we'll just increase the, the frequency by one. Otherwise, throw it in first, then increase the frequency, all right? So it, again, I understand that as you're going through this, you could potentially pick out the most uh, frequently occurring element in that one step. Again, I'm just gonna break it out here, and then you know, if you'd like, optimize away, let me know in the comments down below if there's a, if there's a way to make this a lot nicer and cleaner. Um, this, so then I said here, uh, identify, uh, max occurring element. So maybe what we can do is we can find the, the max num and we'll keep track of the max frequency as well. Um, and we'll set both of those equal to zero just by default right off the bat. And what we'll do is this, is we'll essentially say, let's think, so we wanna go through all of the all the numbers in the dictionary. So we'll say for num in dictionary, uh, if, the, if the frequency of that number, so if, if dictionary of, oops, num and maybe actually you know what well, let me just create a variable say frequency is equal to dictionary of num okay if frequency if it is greater than max frequency then what we want to do is we want to say uh, max num is equal to num and we'll say that max frequency is equal to frequency and i believe that's it so in that step not like for the problems like thanks guys for watching but uh i think that's it in in this step because again what we're doing is i'm i'm just initializing these variables here and I'm saying if the frequency of this number in the dictionary, if it's greater than the max frequency we've seen, then we'll say that's our, our most occurring element. All right, so now what we wanna do is we want to create a, uh, create a result array. So let's maybe uh, create result array. And from there, we want to, or create a result array. Okay, maybe that can be its own stuff. So I'll say a result, and we wanna make it of size the same as barcode. And maybe I'll, just, I'll fill it with zeros for now. It doesn't really matter. So I'll say zero for some underscore in, uh, in barcodes, just so they're the exact same length. So a bit of list comprehension there. And now what we wanna do is to start, so we'll start filling list with most frequently occurring element, all right? So what we're gonna do that first. And what we're gonna do is, let me write out the next step after that. We'll say um, fill out rest of elements. Right, we can't forget those. Then after all that, we're gonna return the, the result at the end of the area, or at the end of the, the problem. So return result. That's overkill. It's crushing a ladybug with a sledgehammer. Um, but being crystal clear here. So we, we start filling this thing from, like we said, the zeroth index. So I'm gonna say we'll start at, at index equals zero. All right, and what we're going to wanna do is we're going to say, Let's do the following. We're essentially going to want to say while, um, let's say this, uh, while max frequency is greater than zero, what we'll do is we'll, we'll decrement that, that max frequency as we go, um, and then eventually we'll, we'll get to zero. So I'll say, well, max frequency is, uh, is greater than zero. We're going to say uh, result at index is going to equal the max number that we had. So we're going to be filling that in. Once we fill it in, we want to jump the index up by two index plus equals two. And so at this point, what we've done, oh, and max frequency minus equals one. All right, I almost forgot that part, I said it out loud. 
if we had, let's say our element occurred three times, so max frequency was three, we'd set result at zero to be our number, and next goes up by two, frequency goes down to two. All right, we try it again, we fill in the second index, frequency goes to one, we fill in the fourth index, frequency goes to one, um, or frequency goes to zero, excuse me, and, and we're good there. So we've jumped our first, second, third, um, and so now we've, we've filled in the result with our maximum occurring element. What I'm going to do here is now I'm going to take that element actually and delete it from the dictionary. And the reason I'm going to delete it from the dictionary is as follows. I'm going to want to iterate through the rest of the dictionary and get the frequency of all those numbers as well. I don't want them iterating through it. I don't want to pick up this max number because we finished with it already. So I'll say delete uh, dictionary of max num. So that's going the way of the dodo. That's gone. And what we're going to say is this. If we look at the example that, that we had here, when I filled in, when we were filling out this array here, we had one, 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 and by the time we got here to the end, if we went back to start filling in the twos, we would have already had to have jumped back to the first index. Conversely, if you know we had we had this scenario where we filled in the ones, but then we still had space to keep going. So we're not sure yet that if that index is out of bounds or not. So what we can simply say is if if index is greater than or equal to the length of result, then we simply want to set index back down to equal one. All right. Otherwise. What we want to do is this: is we want to say uh, for uh, again for num in uh, dictionary, and again these two steps. I'm, I'm sure we can make a, maybe a cleaner way to, to merge these together into one. I just I, I really wanted to do it. I wanted to do it this way again to, to separate the logic because the other way to do this thing is to pull all the items with their frequencies. Um, pull like a dictionary dot items or something and sort them by the frequency. Sorting would take n log n time. I want it to do it in, in n time. So that might make the, the step seem a, a touch clunkier, but it's the performance will be better. Whoops. So that's why that's why I opted to do this. So for the for the nums in the dictionary, we are going to say following. Uh, we're gonna say uh, result of index. Or maybe let me say this. I'll say while the even better, let me just say it. Frequency of that number, okay? We wanna know how many times we gotta fill it in. So I'm gonna take the frequency of that number by saying frequency is equal to dictionary of num. I'm then gonna say that while the, the frequency is greater than zero, so similar to the trick I did above, I will say that result of index is equal to the number. I will then say that the frequency, or the index needs to jump up by two, frequency needs to go down by one. Now, the index, I said two, I typed one. The index needs to jump up by two. And every time we jump up by two, we risk jumping out of bounds again. So every single time I check this, for example, imagine we just got to this step. So we started here, right? Then we realize we're going, we're going down to that second while loop, the one that starts right here. We fill this thing in. Okay, cool. We're happy. We jumped the index up by two after we filled it. So we filled in this two. We jumped the index up by two. But now we realize if we try to fill it again, we're going to get out of bounds. So what we've got to do is again to do the same check that we had up here if we've gotten there then let's go back to index one and and start filling from there and then that'll that'll take us straight to the end and so again this comment is overkill i don't need that there um i do need to align this though and i think that this will do it so let me i'm, I'm gonna run it and just make sure that i didn't make an error oh boy that is surprising very very pleasantly surprising and you love to see that happen 98% no, okay, I rounded, 97.59, super quick. Um, memory usage, I, I did create a result array, a separate one. There is a way to do this without one, I believe, um, and it will. It might require a bit a bit more thinking. So I'll leave that with you guys, maybe as an, it's an exercise left to the reader uh, to, to play around with that if you're interested. This, this all kind of fits just on one screen here, so I'll, I'll leave the code if you want to take a look at it. Any questions about this? Any other questions you want me to solve? You've heard this spiel before. Drop in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, share with your, your best friends, your teachers, your mom, your pet dog, everybody. Everybody should see this, I think. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, guys. As always, I'm just messing around with you. And I will see you next time. Peace.